My guest is artist and owner of Mahogany Studios, Mahogany. Hello. Mahogany Noni, <laughs> I should say. Mahogany Noni, yeah. you're, my, you're my guest today. So, Mahogany, thank you so very much for doing the show. I've been wanting to get you on for a while, and I'm glad you've you're been able to do it today. So thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, you're so welcome. I'm so I'm so glad to be on. I'm so glad that you reached out to me. Um because it was it's at a pretty good time because I'm figured I'm kind of winding down on my art commissions and kind of slowing some things down just to kind of go back and focus on a collection that I want to put out that's completely of my own choosing versus mm -hmm. you know commission requests that other people want. So great timing. Awesome. Well, I'm going to be asking you about both of those things, actually. That's some of my questions that I have for you. So that's perfect. So, Do it. All right. Okay. So Mahogany, first of all, uh, tell us about where you grew up, um, um, where you went to school, um, how you um, became interested in being an artist, those kinds of things. So I was actually born in San Bernardino, California, itty bitty tiny town. I didn't really hear anything about San Bernardino until my last job I had in corporate America, which was a, a logistics company. And we shipped out of, um, we had a couple of warehouses that we worked with that shipped out of San Bernardino. I was like, oh, okay. So that's like the only thing there. <laughs> but um, I honestly, I'm, I haven't been back in gosh, years to California. I've lived in pretty much Georgia all my life since I was six. Mm -hmm. um, Travels around a little bit during my first marriage, um, but ultimately came back um, after my divorce and have pretty much been here. Got a very spunky little curious four-year-old daughter. Um, it was like the light of my days, but also sometimes <laughs> just just, just got to get some nerves a little bit. <laughs> as I'm sure any parent would agree, but you know, it's, it's fun. As far as like how I got into art, that happened pretty early on. Um, that was probably back when I was in fifth grade. I realized I could draw or that my art abilities were different from other people's. They, I'll never forget. We went to um, a computer lab. My whole class did in fifth grade. And we, uh, one girl had printed out the old English um, alphabet. And this is clearly a very Hispanic class. <laughs> so they're trying to, everybody's trying to be a little gangster, a little thug. We're in like fifth grade. And they're like, oh, let's just print. This girl wanted to print out the alphabet. And she hit print and nothing happened. And she's like, I don't know what's going happening. And it's just not coming out. Um, she accidentally ended up hitting print like 20 times. We weren't supposed to, this goes for like just about any school. Nobody likes to waste paper. Nobody likes to waste ink. So mm -hmm. the teacher said, oh my God, you did not just print all that. We have to, everyone just here, take a, take a piece of paper, take a, take a little alphabet and fold it up, put it in your pockets. Don't tell anyone we printed all this paper out. Everybody got back to the, um, we, I was in a trailer back then. So it was a trailer classroom. Um, and we all were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, like, practice drawing my, all right, we'll reconvene the next day and see, you know, who who could draw or can, you know, basically replicate it. And I remember I went home and I had the, I had um, my paper and then I had tore off a piece and given some to my brother to do. And he started trying to sit there and draw the, some of the letters as well. And it wasn't as good as mine. And I was like, oh, okay, well, this is a little better like okay whatever I mean it's not that hard it's just lines <laughs> and I go back to school the next day and I think I had like capital A and lowercase letters as well um A through H or G something like that and I mixed up the order but I didn't realize it until I got to class to class the next day and I showed all like everybody pulled out their piece of paper like okay how'd you do like how's yours come out and the girls in my class swore on everything that I did not draw mine. Wow. That somebody else did it for me and I brought it to school to be, you know, presumptuous and just say that I did this and I really didn't. And in their faces, I took the piece of paper and crumbled it up. And they're like, why did you just do that? And I'm like, because the order was wrong. I put like one letter before another letter and I, was, I did it wrong. So let me just start over. And they literally like picked it up like, <gasps> <laughs> what oh my gosh like 
but those are some good letters. You just do it. I'm like, I'll just do make more. Like, it's okay. Calm down. Because so that was pretty, the, for me, like, it never seemed like a, it just didn't seem hard. It was just something like I always did and I would zone out. Mm -hmm. And I would get into um, what a lot of, you know, neuroscientists refer to as like your flow state. And it's, it's, it really hasn't changed. Like I've gotten older and I've kind of embarked on different types of art, different types of medium. Like for the longest, I only did black and white. It wasn't until I was in eighth grade, I made like my first drawing with color. I don't know why. I just thought, oh my God, black and white just looks so much cooler. It's like so <laughs> more, so dark and emotional. But then I'm like, Oh my gosh, colors, like, a whole new world. And now I do all sorts of stuff from, like, X-Men with claws holding um, X-23's hand to Mexican flags to abstract Dutch pours. Um, so I'm all over the place, but I like it. I don't like being boxed in. <laughs> well, that's a good thing because I've seen the work that you've um, done on, on Instagram, on your Instagram post. And I've, I've seen some of the flags that you've done and God, your work is just like amazing. I <laughs> mean, you, you, you have, you are so talented and Thank I you. wish I had an ounce of that <laughs> talent. Um, I guess. That's so kind. I appreciate that. You're... Well, you're welcome, but it's, it's so true because anyone who sees your work, I mean, I mean, look at that behind you. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that takes talent. And it, apparently you have natural talent. You have that. Yeah. And honestly, it was, I was so insecure about selling paintings for years. I mean, years. This goes back to like, I don't know, probably like even when I was a child, I never even like drawings. Like I would draw, make a drawing for someone and Valentine's Day rolled around. I would make a little heart with a script over it mm -hmm. and then put some, some guy's girlfriend's name in there. And then that would be her Valentine's Day gift. Like I have people that still like mainly on Facebook because I have a lot of my high school friends on there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I still have such and such drawing. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. Like, I don't know. I feel like sometimes I'll just I might be like old and dying and people will be like, oh, this is worth so much money now. I'm like, oh, that's the plan <laughs> to get to that point. But, um, but yeah, I've, I've never, I've never, I've always wanted to just explore different types of art and even like with what I want to do with my net collection in May, like that's basically me wanting to create something that I've, I haven't seen done. Mm -hmm. Um, or maybe I just haven't come across it yet. So now, do you have any artists um, that have influenced you or in inspired you over the years that you've oh. looked at their stuff and you've been like, wow, they were well, amazing or are amazing? Yeah. So um, in my earlier um, childhood, there was this, oh my gosh, I don't even, I don't know if anyone even in listening knows what show this is, but... It was an older man. It came it was like a kid's show. It was an older man. And it was called, I think, like, Pappy Druid or something. Mm -hmm. And it was, <laughs> yeah, oh, my God, I remember the theme song and everything. But it's basically this older, like, grandpa-looking farmer man. And he has this magical <laughs> that he goes into. And there was always, like, the way he would solve the problems was he would make drawings. And ever, I just remember at the end, he would make, a drawing and literally go step by step by step and I would always do it and I'm like that was like my very first like you know you can make more than just letters or you can make more than just little boxes like you can really make something mm -hmm. after that I mean more recently it's been um an amazing Dutch poor artist um who I found on YouTube who I actually learned from uh Rinska Dana she's Ooh, European of some sort. I just can't remember what. I might. I think like German or Dutch. I'm not sure. But um, she's um, she's extraordinary. Um, and then um, there's another guy, Colors by Felix, and of course Bob Ross. Duh. <laughs> He's up my side. I mean, the, the guy's um, been gone for the longest time, but it's it's still like you can turn to KPBS here in San Diego and see his see him painting. Oh, nice. It, it's it's he. I mean, the guy is still such a classic. Yeah. It's just. <laughs> It's just, it's, he's there's a, even a Bob Ross chia pit. 
cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw that over the holidays. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all sorts of stuff. All but he was, I mean, that he's he's influenced so many people. Mm -hmm. So many people. And so it's interesting to see your influences. And yeah. I've I've got a I've got a little rainbow of of influences. You've got like your your YouTube people and you've got like Bob Ross. <laughs> so yeah. And for you, um, what have been some of your favorite works that you've done of your own so far? Oh, oh, that's a toughie. Oh my goodness. Um, there was one I just sold, well, not just, just, but back in, um, I guess like mid-March, um, at my art show, I sold it. It was called Blue Lagoon, and I'll have to tag you in it later so you can see it, but, um, it was one of my favorites, and I hadn't even glossed it. I remember that week I was rushing to get everything ready for my first art show. I was so excited, and like I didn't even gloss it. I just took it, and the colors were beautiful and just popped and worked very well together. And um, I that was my first Dutch pour, so my first kind of flowy looking painting I had done in a long time. So I was kind of nervous. That was like my tester. I was like, let me just see how this comes out and it came out perfectly mm -hmm. and I sold it and I was like oh my goodness and the girl was so wow full circle the girl that bought it was from California and said she bought it because it reminded her of the water in California and she was homesick and I called Aww. it the lagoon so I was yeah it was um I loved that one I really I really really enjoyed that one now one thing that's really fascinating for me to see is when you post your time lapse work oh yeah that is fascinating because <laughs> just to see how your work progresses i mean well, that's amazing and it's it's I just have, oh, it's fascinating goodness. to see that i'm glad that you do that because it, it gives viewers an inside look at what it takes and how meticulous you yeah. are at doing your work because it seems like you're very meticulous yeah i i appreciate you for pointing that out because honestly those time lapses if I record for 20 minutes, the time lapse is 30 seconds. Wow. You know, so if if you could, if you have that in mind and then you think it's like sometimes I put them up and they're like four minutes or however long. But also, too, I'll be completely honest with you. I started doing time lapses because I wanted to get away from painting live. Mm -hmm. I was doing that a lot um, back in the fall and during the summer. And... It was nice, um, but I've just there's just nothing like being in like the zone and being in that flow state where I am completely concentrated on what I'm doing. It's to the point where, and I've even mentioned this to my brother, where I'll get so focused, so tuned into what I'm doing, I'll forget to eat. I'll forget to drink water. Like I have to bring stuff into this, like my workstation. Mm -hmm to like snack on or drink or something because if not I will literally go to bed and like wait why am I hungry oh because I haven't eaten like five hours right so and it's obviously completely unintentional but I it's I mean I I heard it on a I heard somebody giving a keynote speech or something saying that they wanted to learn guitar but they didn't have the commitment that a professional guitarist had and when he went to go speak to a friend who was a professional guitarist, he noticed that he would hold his breath to play a certain note. Hmm. And then he thought to himself, like, I don't, I don't have that level of commitment to sit there and hold my breath. And then I thought about that and I was like, I am literally that person because I will, when it comes to paint, like I can paint or draw a straight line, no problem. Mm -hmm. But when I do, I actually do hold my breath. <laughs> So, wow yeah and i i mean and there's there's little moments where you almost want time to freeze for a second just to like really yes do it perfectly but also to just like it just i honestly the best way i can describe it is just i feel like i'm in just complete alignment with what god wants me to do and there's that's really the best way i can say it and that's i feel like also too why i prefer to do also the time lapses because 
you got to see me doing all my randomness, flipping the canvas around and flipping that thing up like a tortilla and just like, okay, going to town on it. And then at the end, you just see like the sped up process. It's almost more satisfying to watch, I feel, rather than watching me for five minutes paint one line over and over. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cool to see that. And just like I said, you're, you're very detailed. You're very meticulous oh, yeah. with your work. And just your painting, it's just that freehand. And I'm, I want to talk to you about that too. Yeah. Doing, um, doing a commission work as, a, as opposed to doing like the things behind you, just doing like freehand, just mm -hmm. things that you see visually in your mind that you want to do, or did they, they just come out. I'm mm, sure they yeah. just come out too. Um, so I want to talk about that when we come back from our first break, the differences in, in doing those kinds of work and the different levels of satisfaction that you get from doing each one. And my host, or my host, <laughs> my guest, man, I'm leaving this in too. I'm, I'm not taking this out. I'm leaving this in. My guest, Mahogany <laughs> Noni, she's an artist. Oh, way to remind me I need to start my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, le I'm leaving that faux pas in there just so people can see that I'm a real guy. I make mistakes too. <laughs> oh, don't we all? I make mistakes too. Um, but my guest today is Mahogany Noni. So Mahogany Thank you so much for doing the show today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, I wanted to ask you in this segment, among other things, about doing commissioned work as opposed to just doing just your freehand, just your your own individual ideas and doing that kind of work. What level of satisfaction you get from doing each one, um, the differences in terms of thought process into doing those two works, because mm -hmm. it's, two, I'm, it's two totally different thought processes for sure. Oh, yeah and um, what your feedback has been like from um, customers and from people on social media who've seen your work, because mm. your work is just incredible. No, oh, thank you. You're so um, to hit your first question about, you know, the differences between like the free-handed ideas that I have versus very specific, rigid ideas that I'm brought or that get brought to me, I should say. It's, um, it's, it's, it's an, it's an, it's a dance, regardless of what I do. It's a dance. It's either, you know, a very like solo hippie with a hula hoop dance. And I'm just over here waving my paint everywhere mm -hmm. or a very rigid, like foxtrot. And it has to be done a specific manner because the person doesn't want that color in the painting. That's right. just kind of how I see it. I also taught dance. <laughs> for like four years so it's probably why I'm using that reference mm -hmm. but um yeah it's um I prefer when I'm given free reign and just kind of bring the idea to fruition for the person I don't and you would think I'm really big on like sketching and drawing but honestly before the before the uh, paintings go out or before the paintings get made, I really don't sketch all that much. I remember for the iconic Mexico piece that I did, the Mexican flag, I, it was the, actually, I think I have it in here somewhere. It was like the, the roughest like sketch you probably have ever seen. And I just, I it literally, it came to me right in the morning. I, I think it was like eight or something. I can't remember what time it was. I rolled out of, out of bed, looked at my phone and saw, and of course, <laughs> check your media, social media first thing in the morning, right? The worst thing to do. <laughs> but it was probably the best thing that morning. I had a message from my old manager saying, hey, you know, I want to see if I can get you to make a painting for me. I was like, sure, what do you have in mind? Mm -hmm. I don't really know, but I just know I need something and I want you to do it. And I was like, okay, well, I've known that my former manager had always worked in departments that were Mexico related mm -hmm. um, because it's just all, all that we did and all he was doing at the time too at his new job and I was like how about I make you a Mexican flag and he's like yes that's so me he's Mexican he works with Mexico so I was like it worked perfectly and I was like okay I'll do it like Dutch pour so the colors will be flowing they won't actually blend with each other um, and they won't be completely divided either he loved the idea I took it I ran with it and 
it was great because he i mean everything i showed him was like all right that that looks great yeah sure that looks great he just kind of went along for the ride. <laughs> um but it's also interesting when i get commissions and i've had to i've gotten better about asking do you want to see the process do you only want to see the sketch because some people flat out don't want to see the process like i'm forbidden to share anything like they want it to be a complete surprise and they want to be the first ones to see it when they get it wow um so yeah and i take that so seriously because it's like if i'm paying somebody you know a couple hundred dollars to make them a painting or they're they're gonna i would hope honor what i'm asking and just not you know put it out mm -hmm. so and then it's always the ones that they want to keep a secret that are like the ones i'm like fiending <laughs> to share <laughs> Like the one I just finished today, which was the Ecuador flag, and I shipped it out today. I, I even sent um a miniature little something with it, and he's gonna love it. But it's um it's interesting, kind of in my mind, they see the sketch on the canvas, but then after that, their brain their their brain just goes off. They're like, I just have to trust she's gonna it's gonna turn out great mm -hmm. and it usually comes out very well thankfully hasn't you know hasn't steered me wrong yet but um as far as the op opposite end which is the people that are very like I've only had maybe one or two people that flat out exactly knew what they wanted and one of them go figure was my own brother mm -hmm. and he was like nope that's not it no nah, that's not it and I had to like try it again and again and again. I was like, fine. All right, how about like this? And then when I got it to what he wanted, I realized it pushed me out of my comfort zone, but it also inspired me to maybe later on in the fall, it'll be like my fall collection. Mm -hmm. um, and it was that one was an emoji. It was like a bear with colors shooting out of it. I don't know if you saw that one, but that was. Um, it was a challenging one, <laughs> to say the least. Tell me about the tattoo that you did. What tattoo? Um, are you talking about the one with the Wolverine? Oh, well, the it was... Oh, gosh. It was one it that you, you did kind of recently. Mm hmm I know. That has to be it. It was... Um, I think I know what you're talking about. It was the, the Up House. It had to be it, I think. Because I was tattooing... It was... This will this will have to be it. All right, we're gonna turn it to wrong. That one, that's like the yes, 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 yes. That, that's okay, it. so that was, so that was. Um, let me see if I can pull up the that. So that right there was actually based off of um, X Men. So it's Logan and then X twenty three, which is the daughter in that last Logan movie that came out mm -hmm. um, and she has two claws so they're holding hands and the situation with that was that he has that tattoo on his hand on his forearm and I wanted him um, to be a part of the painting since it was for him and for his daughter um, so I was like hey, just shoot send me a picture of your arm like with the tattoo both sides I mean he's a military guy so he's pretty tattered up I was like pick an arm which one which one do you want? Which one do you want me to use? Um, he's like, yo, this one with this one. It's the up tattoo. That tattoo, uh, painting all the balloons and everything. Like, there's, like I said, there's a reason why I throw those on time lapses. Because they're just, they take so long. Mm -hmm. um, they're very tedious at times. But it came out pretty good. Um, a lot of people were kind of confused. Like, why is up on, like, the movie up on that? Like, I was like, well, you have to see the guy's hand. And then you understand that it's literally just a painting for him because in the event that somebody were to try to replicate my work mm -hmm. they wouldn't understand why that was there unless they saw it from my page unless mm -hmm. they really wanted to be evil in like photoshop um but yeah that was uh that was a fun one same situation with that one he did not want to see any of it so i was literally fiending to share it with people and I think I might have shared it with like two or three people and like did the little close friends on Instagram where it only shows your story to like whoever you pick mm -hmm. and I would send it I'm like oh my god you have to see this you I'm like I'm like geeking out right now like, this is amazing 
because I never, um, I get, I get asked all the time, like, hey, can you paint this? Hey, can you paint this? I'm like, look, the only thing I will not paint is faces. And I painted, um, I did, I've done two portraits and um, they've been for the same person mm -hmm. only because he's understood that I will only do abstract. Right. And um, it was a Father's Day portrait where it's a dad and his son shaving and they're all different shades of blue. And then um, a husband and wife on their wedding day. And you just don't see their face. You just mainly see their silhouette. So, mm. yeah, other than that, I stay in my lane. <laughs> stay in my lane. Well, you are really, really talented at what you do. And I wanted to ask you, too. It's, it sounds to me and that you've had really positive feedback from your work. Thankfully, yes, I, I, I did have one, um, I don't even want to call it a complaint, but it was one very unfortunate thing that had happened when I was first, first starting out and I had to learn about what paper to use when wrapping the, the paintings and, you know, doing shipping and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I felt so bad. I still to this day feel so bad. <laughs> but uh, it was just one of those moments. It was a learning opportunity, and I learned from it and moved on and got better. But um, I put the wrong paper, and so the paper stuck to the painting. Oh, no. Um, so, yeah, she still never really let me know how it came out. She said it, it was okay, and she just said it was fine. It was fine. But I was like, no, like it's just – it stuck. But um, – but, I mean, other than that, it everything's been fine. Like, I've had people ask me, like, hey, like, um, can you send this to, like, California? I was like, honey, I've sent paintings to Australia. It, I, I, I'm great with shipping. My, my, I got had to get new boxes, actually, because um, for the longest, I, I'm not the type of artist. Like, I don't order from Uline. I never had to because I just wasn't getting that many orders. Mm -hmm. um, but recently, because of that one Mexico flag video going viral, and getting so many requests, I, I had to. <laughs> like, I have three more commissions I have to finish um, within the next two weeks. And how long does it, I'm glad you brought that point up too. Um, how long does it generally take you to do a commissioned work? I was honestly hammering these babies out the past month, probably like two a week. Wow. Two paintings a week, two 15 inch by 30 inch paintings a week. Yeah. And it started to get a little bit much. Um, and I don't want to say it wasn't fulfilling because it still was. I knew when I needed a dial back, having, I guess, having been in corporate, I, and lived through that life of working a job I was not happy with. I kind of knew when those signals will start coming up like, okay, um, I don't, I don't want to pay right now. Right. And I absolutely refuse to paint if I'm like, if I'm in a bad mood mm -hmm. or if I'm not just in a good place emotionally or mentally, like I won't do it. I will not do it. I will send a message to that client so quick, be like, nope, it's going out tomorrow. I am so sorry. And like throw a little goodie in there um, <laughs> so fast. But no, I'm not. I just, I am a firm believer that if I don't feel like I'm going to be able to get into that mental clarity and emotional happiness, that leads me into being in a good place of like working in a flow, I ain't going to do it. I'm just yeah. not. It's like we have... It's a burning joke down here in Georgia because we have these restaurants called Waffle Houses. I guess it would be y'all's. It's like a diner, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've ever been, yeah. Like, if you don't see this, the cook outside smoking, it's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good food. <laughs> like, it's just not. If I don't, if I'm not, if I'm not good day emotionally, the painting is just not gonna be good. It's just not. So, I, it's mental health is something I definitely prioritize. So, um. Yeah, I've, I've had to learn to balance it. And this one was a toughie because the Ecuador flag has so much detail. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I spaced them out. Honestly, it, it takes me probably anywhere from 6 to 14 hours, maybe. Depends how I stretch it out total. Mm -hmm. But I break that down over the course of like 
a week. Right. Um, just so I'm not burnt out and I can come back to it and be like, oh, let me, like, I caught something that I didn't see before. Um, I heard somebody once referred to it as giving the painting room to breathe. Interesting. And I think it's like that as a writer for myself too, if, if you're not know. in a good place, yeah, your, yeah, your stuff's not going to be just, that good. You're almost more frustrated. It's like, I had, it's like getting mad at yourself for having writer's block. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. It, it, it seems like it's, it's exactly like that. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be in a good place mentally oh, to yeah. write too. You have to be because if you're not, then you're, it, you can tell, you can tell your, your quality and your thought processes aren't what they would be is if if your mind was clear and open and just free of all stress and stuff yucky stuff mm -hmm. um it's you've got to have that as an artist i think no matter what you're doing you've got to have a, a good clear head and a and a happy disposition, I think. And speaking of your, your happy disposition, <laughs> um, to me, I mean, I love seeing your videos on Instagram because even if even if you're having a bad day, you still come across as pleasant and <laughs> grounded. And I love that. And what do you attribute these qualities to, to yourself? Um, do you feel like your life experiences have kind of brought you to this? Um, or have you uh, always been like that? Or is it a combination? Um, I would say my mindset and my perspective as I've gotten older has shifted more towards gratitude. And that is why I am how I am now, like having experienced all sorts of things from like homelessness to, you know, divorce. And I'm only 29 years old. I'm not, you know, I haven't lived that that long but I've tried to make sure that I learn from what I have been through and realize it could always be worse because it really always can be and um like with the year that we all had last year if we didn't come out of it with a sense of understanding or a, I mean I'll speak for myself but I really feel like last year I came out of it with a better sense of who I am and that is what keeps me grounded it's not necessarily who I am to the world it's who I am right. and who I feel God put me on this earth to be not for everyone else because at the end of the day when I die I'm not dying with the whole world it's just me <laughs> so um kind of having that um that understanding and uh, also something else that keeps me grounded just because notifications can get crazy on social media for me sometimes. Right. Um, I try to make it a point to take a day, if not two days off completely from social media. Yeah, which is very um, smart. Oh yeah. Like, um, like when everything started happening with, uh, uh, yeah, in March with the TikTok video, I mean, I had to, I had, I had, like, I couldn't tell myself, oh, I'm just going to log off the app. Like, no, I have to log off the app and delete the app. Like, when I log off, I delete the apps, like, yeah. at night. I, I can't, because if not, I will lay in bed. <laughs> like, oh, my so and -so's up to this. And because, because I'm so, when I am on during the day, I'm more focused about putting out content and making sure I responded and, oh, did I do this or did I do that? And, then at the end of the day, when it's like my catch up time, I'm like, oh, wait, it's 1130 and I'm watching a video about cats like on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for me, my relationship with social media is right now for me, it's just Instagram. I have a Facebook that I've used a couple of times over the last couple of years. Yeah, same. I just, I just, I have my stuff from Instagram roll into Facebook and that's kind of how I've managed that. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, I just, I, I just, I don't know for me with social media, it's like when it's used for good, it's awesome. Oh yeah. But there are so that's many, anything. yeah. When we have people like Twitter, um, people have used Twitter for like the wrong reasons. They, they've used all the stuff for the wrong reasons at some point, mm -hmm. but when it gets nasty and just really, you know, negative, it's, yeah. you know, that's, as long as people are using it for the right reasons, 
and for good, right. it's a good thing. Yeah. But if people are doing it to to shame other people or to say bad things about other people, yeah. then it's like, okay, enough already. Yeah, it's just nasty just to be nasty and the world doesn't need that. Like we have enough yucky in the world. Like, yeah. It's... Yeah, there's there's too much of that. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you, dude, you seem like a very spiritual person. And oh. what do you attribute that also into making you the woman that you are today? So I love that question because I'm finally starting to feel like I'm more secure with that answer. <laughs> um, but I was so, okay, so I was raised Catholic, but I've never really felt at home in any church. And mind you, I've tried all sorts of like religions and spiritualities. And at the end of the day, for me, it just boils down to it being a relationship and a dialogue that I have constantly with God, with my creator. Mm -hmm. And I'm, because I had such a deep, like, religious aspect during my upbringing, like, going to, like, bro, like, retreats up in the mountains and, you know, being, you know, I know all about, like, Baptist churches and, like, people laying out and catching the Holy Ghost, all that stuff. Like, that's been me. <laughs> that definitely be me. <laughs> Praying in tongues, all that. So, um that's definitely definitely been me and I will call on God if I need God and otherwise the rest of the time I'll just keep on thanking God for everything that I have because I feel like that's something that really helped me actually turn some depressive patterns around I was I wouldn't say I was necessarily depressed but I was headed down that route just because I was a little unhappy with where I was career-wise mm -hmm. um but keeping a gratitude journal it man it, it did it did wonders for me and every day for like a couple months my goal was to write 50 gratitudes I didn't always hit it sometimes I didn't even hit half <laughs> but it got me in in the mindset that everything I had I needed to be grateful for it everything literally like I complain about okay I didn't like oh my god like I you know, I slept six hours instead of like eight or whatever. And I have a, one of my closest friends in Australia, you know, has sleep apnea where he, it's impossible almost for him to get a really good night, good night's rest. And I'm like, what? Like, so yeah, there's, there's always something to be grateful for. And just always uh, taking my prayer life very, very seriously. And um, just, keeping it more of a conversation and not, you know, letting the guilt of those ideologies and those dogmas that I was raised with as a Catholic, um, not guilt me into thinking that I am wrong for doing X, Y, and Z. That makes sense. It does make sense. Now, speaking of um, just, things that you've gone through in your own life experience um you're a mom and you have a, a little munchkin and and for you what in your own opinion and in your own feelings what does it mean for you to be a, a, a wonderful role model for your daughter and what do you what lessons and life experiences do you hope to um show her and to inspire her to become the person that she wants to be one day. Oh my goodness. I honestly feel like I've learned so much from her, as strange as that may sound, because she's always, and I do mean always, been very assertive and has, she's in a way an opposite of how I am, because I am for the longest had a very hard time um communicating what it was that I wanted and what I needed even up until the day I was giving birth you know like somebody had on the tv and I they were watching a channel I didn't want to watch and I just didn't say anything and it's funny with like all those things kind of like catch up to me and <laughs> homegirl sees something on the tv she doesn't want to watch you <laughs> not no she doesn't want to watch that but um she's I, if nothing else, I really want to instill in her that she can 
be just who she is and not be wrong for that. So she can be just as assertive. She can be just as, what is it? Oh gosh, the little um, lean in phrase. Um, she can have leadership qualities, executive, um, a, an executive demeanor or whatever, but she is that kid. She really is. She just started daycare not too long ago. And she has the whole little class whipped into shape. Like, hey, you're doing this. You're doing this. Wow. <laughs> like, who are you? Like, I just I just walked in, but this is what we're doing. <laughs> I tell you, working with kids for so many years that I've worked with kids now, that's what I love most about them. They're, they're all different. They all have their own personalities. And it's just wonderful. And I, and I know you're finding this out because she's only four. Mm -hmm. But you've been there from day one. Oh, yeah. And just to see the evolution of her, and you're going to see this more over the years as she gets older. Just becoming cause... more herself, you know, mm -hmm. it's like adding more layers to an onion. Like, right. It's like, oh, okay, we're doing this now. All right. <laughs> so it, and it's like some of the things she says and the things she's interested interested in it just it just kind of confirms like oh yeah I'm doing good like she's wanting to learn about excavators and do science experiments I'm just like oh yes <laughs> I'm I'm breeding a nerd here like <laughs> you know um but it I do I teach her like when we pretend play like we don't do tea parties we do this is your store and you're the manager and wow. how much is this like that's let's instill some entrepreneurship qualities here um i have had my kid drop the f-bomb but i'm more concerned <laughs> oh that has happened that has happened and it in it i was upset totally digressing here for a second because i know somebody listening has probably had this happen in their life where their kid just blurted it out and you're like Ooh! and I told her we had to, it was early in the morning. We were just getting up and it's like, oh, we have to go some, we have to go to so-and-so's house. And she's like, oh, and she used the, the S word in the complete correct context. Wow. Like, I'm, <laughs> am I mad or am I impressed? <laughs> <laughs> so the kids are very, very, very smart. I started doing something with her that I was not that wasn't done with me growing up, which is affirmations. Mm -hmm. So we'll be driving to her daycare and I'll tell her, you know, um, all right, mama, let's do it. So what, what do we say? I am smart. I am blessed. I am intelligent. God loves me. My family loves me. And it's going to be a good day. Like, I feel like we don't affirm children enough. Like it just, I just, that's why Honestly, in my heart of hearts, I feel families fall apart because you end up having a broken child within the body of an adult right. out in the world, not expressing their needs, not saying what they need to say, running around like a temp with a temper tantrum because they didn't use their words. Well said. And I, I've, I've seen that too. And you make, sounds to me, you make it a point to really connect with your daughter every day. And that's important. Um, Try, yeah. It's not, it's not always easy. Um, and I will admit at one point I could tell she maybe was feeling ignored by me because being a single parent and she only comes up running to me and asking me for attention and I'm on my phone. I had to kind of, explain to her and I also had to have the conversation with myself it's like I'm not a bad mom I am genuinely working on my phone but because she no longer sit, sees me sitting in front of four com computer screens um it's just it looks different it just almost looks like I'm she's ignoring me she'll be like mama I said come here <laughs> I'm like child and I'm like mm, let me reel it back because she has a point I have like I ignored her but it's I I do I definitely do like I there's certain things that I will not skip out on and one of them has always been um singing you are my sunshine to her when she goes to bed Aww. and just having meals together so yeah oh, that's awesome so, yeah if nothing else I gotta have a couple little pillars here to like be checks and balances 
And see, kids remember that too. Oh, and yeah. I, because I have memories of when I was a, a tiny munchkin and when I, things, I had quite the interesting childhood. My dad was an abusive alcoholic mm. and he was a womanizer. And I mean, that would just be getting into another different story. Something maybe I'll write about one day. I've Do it. Kind of, even uh, if it's like even if it's like fiction i feel like it's it might be even easier i hear to do like a like i heard oprah talk about this actually on the podcast not too long ago she said it's really hard to talk about yourself yeah it is but once you put it on like oh this character it's like they just, just wow. you know i i I've hope written, you do because i really believe you can help somebody yeah i've written a chapter or two about my life I, I did it a few years back, and it's it's interesting to get those thoughts out mm. from times far long ago and to get them out on paper. And I sincerely hope that it would help. Um, oh yeah, someone because I just you Even wouldn't just you wouldn't believe person. some of the stuff that I had to go through and that my mom and my siblings went through. I lost my brother years ago he was in a hit and run motorcycle accident oh wow i'm so sorry to hear and, that uh, he didn't survive the injuries um but and for a long period of time i had it in my head that gee am i gonna make it to the age that my brother was Ooh. and so i did but still i mean that was in the back of my head for a long time and um it really brings to you at a young age, it kind of brings that mortality to you. Like, you know what? I'm not Superman. I'd like to think that I am, but I'm not. I mean, people die all the time. And especially with the COVID thing that's yeah. happened. I mean, it's really brought that to the forefront of society where you have just totally healthy people dying from this all stuff. Enough, yeah. So if anything, I learned at a younger age that, you know what, I am mortal. And yeah, it's, it doesn't make me not want to take chances. Um, but I'm more cognizant, I think, of what I am doing. And mm -hmm. I'm careful, like, I want to live life regardless, right? But certain things that, um, that maybe, are just, to me that I would have done I may have done when I was really, really young that I wouldn't have given a second thought after my brother died. I, I think about that. And so it just makes you want to be more careful. Um, I wish I had kids. I don't have any kids of my own. Um, but if I had kids, um, I think I would want, I think I'd be extra protective. But at the yeah. same time, I would understand that you can't be there all the time for them. Yeah, you have to trust them to make responsible choices. Too. And that you instilled enough in them that they kind of have you in the back of their mind still kind of playing like a broken record so that they make the right choices. And mm -hmm. it, it is tough. And I hear a lot of people who are older and are becoming empty nesters kind of talk about that. Like they're just like, it's like watching them jump off a cliff because sometimes they leave for college or they go to travel or mission trips, whatever the case may be. And it's just like, oh, I'm like, I'm kind of feeling that because that's kind of how it was for me taking my daughter to daycare for the first time. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like you're leaving me. Like you're going to have this whole little life right now. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't even worried about it. I, <laughs> ah, I, I went back to my car. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> He's growing up, but you can't stop him. It's just, that's how yeah. it is. We grow and we live and we die. And it's so poetically ironic to me that we have that as a guarantee in life that we're going to die. Yes. But it still comes as a shock because at that moment when we find out somebody died, it really hits home just how much of an impact that person had in your life and the void that will remain with that person no longer being there right well i wanted to ask you too um shifting gears a little bit what advice would you give an aspiring artist 
young or old, um, what advice would you give them about following their dreams and following their passions and doing what you're doing? Because you're, like you said, you've, you've gone through the corporate world, you've done different things, you've gone, you've had different situations happen to you in your life, but you still persevered. And I think that's a huge word. Perseverance is oh. huge. And what advice would you give someone who's trying to follow their dreams like you are doing? Keep them to yourself if you have to, but don't let them go and continue feeding the dream. I mean, I feel like when you have a dream and it starts off small, it's like starting a fire on a windy day. You have to kind of protect it. You got to kind of shelter it because it's, it's in an incubator. Like you got to just make sure it just stays right there. It grows a little bit. It grows. Maybe it doesn't spark the first time. Maybe it was something, a hobby that you love to do for years. And then it just is not come the joys and coming back like you thought it would. That's honestly what happened to me when I started painting the first time. I just, I was like, no, I need to find some, a different type of art to do because it's frustrating at first and just keep trying. And I had always heard people say, you know, keep your goals to yourself, you know, make your moves in silence. <laughs> but I'm like the younger kids always say like, you know, move in silence and then like your actions speak and all that. And I ne had never been that person. Honestly, I had never been that person. I feel like COVID kind of, and all of last year with people being more, keeping to themselves, I kind of became more of um, a little bit more of an introvert or would bask more in that. Mm -hmm. um, but I would always tell people what my goals were. Honestly, I didn't care. Um, even if they didn't, if they flopped and I just didn't care. But even if it's your own family members, who don't believe you or who don't take you seriously, just do it because eventually they will catch up. Right. Eventually they will. And that's honestly what happened to me in March when I had my art show. My brother went, his friends were there as well. And he, was, he just looked at me like, wow, like, I'm so proud of you. I'm like, we live together. <laughs> Yeah, what was that whole, I was going to ask you about that earlier. What was that whole experience like for you last month, having that oh, first art show? It was exhilarating. It was amazing. I honestly, and I'm, I'm probably going to make my first episode on my podcast again about this, but I remember walking in and I just felt like I arrived and these are my people. Like, I honestly felt like back when I was going to the art institute because I went to an art school for like three all of three months because it was just way too expensive mm -hmm. and I remember just walking in like, feeling so inspired by everyone there and it put everyone literally like stuff on the walls in the hallways I was just like everything was just like oh my god like these are my people <laughs> ah. and it completely different types of art but I just I I, I loved it and I walked in um, I basically had to walk the whole room to get back to where I was going to be at in mm -hmm. my area. And I mean, I'll, I'll be completely honest. I didn't sell out. I didn't sell like over a dozen pieces or anything. I made a few sales, um, made a couple of great connections, some networking. Um, it was, it was a very unforgettable night. I don't think I'll ever ever forget it and then I feel like it'll be only up from there um I try to prepare as much as I could but eventually I just kind of have to let it go like some paintings went weren't glossed but um this one of them still sold so I yeah it's I can't wait to do it again <laughs> it's yeah it's probably best way I could sum that up is I, I I felt like I arrived I felt like those are my people that's where I belong that's just in my spirit, I was like, I'm home. Like, this is it. That's awesome. Want to go back and do it again. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, what do you see for yourself moving forward now um, in terms of uh, more um, art that you plan on doing? Um, what do you see yourself doing in the months and uh, maybe in, in the, the next year ahead? What do you see on the horizon for yourself? 
So I have a collection I want to launch in May, or I will launch, I should say, it's just speak life into things. Um, so that's going to be in May. That'll technically be about the one year anniversary that I started painting officially or started selling my art. Um, and that's going to be like my luxury collection. Those pieces are going to be pretty big and um, priced differently, mm -hmm. <laughs> to say like that, than, uh, than the paintings I've, I've been doing for commissions right now. Um, so I'm kind of pulling back right now. I've got three more commissions to do and I'm going to kind of close the, close it up on that um, and then pretty much work on those. Maybe have um, something I do for 2021 graduates, um, something I can make custom for like anyone uh, if they have like a graduate in their life that's graduating and here's a print or here's a canvas or something. Um, but as far as um, other endeavors, I definitely want to try to learn about creating like a art coalition or art group of some sorts for Hispanic artists here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, I was going through and trying to find kind of organizations to work with to promote my art and do an art show. And I was dumbfounded that I really couldn't find very many Hispanic or Latino, Latinx uh, organizations. And I remember I asked the girl who helped me and was one of the directors for the organization I was with for the art show I did. And she was like, I don't know of any. I was like, I know. How do we not know of any? It's Atlanta for crying out loud. Like there's such a huge population of Hispanics. So I figured I was like, okay, well, um, I guess that could be something I, I tackle in the future. And learn about some more and see, pray about it, see if that's something that God is leading me towards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, before you go, mm -hmm. tell us about um, where um, listeners and viewers for this episode, um, where they can find your work on your website, um, your social media sites and so forth, so they can, so they can find you. So it's Mahogany Studios, pretty much across the board, M-A-H-O-G-A-N-I dot studios. And that's on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook group, mahoganystudios.com for my website. I've got a couple pictures right now on my website of like previous works I've done. Um, just to give people an idea of other types of art I can do, not just the flowy abstract stuff. Um, and also I have a form on there in case you want to get a quote or commission. Um, I have a form on there as well. I do currently have my commissions closed for this month. So I'm only doing three and then I'll resume again in May. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's where you can find me. For another thing I wanted to ask you before you go this will be the first time I've asked this question. Um, describe yourself in one sentence. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is, okay, so I literally, I had, okay. I think I'm, I think I'm ready for this, but I, I actually had thought about this. Wow, that's insane that you just asked me. <laughs> um... I could describe myself in one sentence or like my go-to, this is me sentence. Um, two, two sentences if you need it. No, I'll do, I'll <laughs> do one. I'm up for the challenge. I would say I am an artistic soul on earth here to just express God's beauty through the talents I was given. Wow. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And to get to that point, and I, the reason why I decided to ask that question is because when people get to a certain point in their lives, different points, they can describe themselves in the diff in different ways. Yeah. Um, I was actually, I was thinking about that and in the sense that a lot of the times in my 20s when I was asked 
you know, tell me about yourself, I would immediately go to both uh, talking about uh, endlessly about my job, mm -hmm. a job that I had, maybe a job I wasn't even happy with, but I would still go on and on like, is that made up in my mind who I was? That's not who you are. That's what you do. Right. And it's very interesting because I believe it's Japanese culture that if you ask someone what they do for a living, it's actually extremely rude, like very, very rude. Wow. It's kind of like the equivalent of asking an American, hey, Phil, how much, how much do you make a year? <laughs> like, that is how rude it is. It's like all up in my business. <laughs> Who are you? Like, I mean, are we even, what, what is this? What, like, it, it's interesting because it, and ever since kind of taking this leap of faith on myself, it's been interesting to kind of not have a title, but also feel the sense of like, initially feel this sense of like, okay, I'm, I'm a freelance artist, I'm this, and then that people ask me, and I'm just like, I'm a person, I'm a mother, I'm, I have all sorts of different things I do, but you want to know me, I'm compassionate, I'm kind, I'm, you know, the, the characteristics that make me up, not necessarily the things I do. And I think all of that comes through um, when, whenever people are able to, to, to see what you have posted, your, your posts on Instagram and everything. Oh. I think all that comes through, all that comes yeah. out. And you posted, I guess it was, maybe it was yesterday. Or the the day gratitude thing. thing. Yeah, there's that, but but that you, had, you a had a picture. There's a photo of you holding your daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just like oh, that melted me because, to me, it, to, it just just being on the outside looking in, not mm -hmm. being a parent, but having always wanted to be one, one of the greatest accomplish, accomplishments you can have is being a parent and just having those wonderful moments with your kids that are just all encompassing and just just sweet yeah and and that I, that's why i like photos like that i like moments like that when you're able to see parents with their kids because people take for granted kids are only young once they're only oh, going to be yeah. these holdable little people once so when you can embrace those moments when you understand the gravity of those moments and just how short and fleeting they are mm -hmm. i mean that's wonderful and that to me, that just kind of captures the app, the essence of who you are yeah. and, and what yeah. things are important to you. So. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, family's always been like a, a, a very strong pillar in my life. And thankfully, uh, God gave me a good one, <laughs> you know, um, all around. So, yeah, it's then I also I'm never the one to share pictures and not to knock anyone but like I say I stay in my lane and I'm comfortable in my lane and that's where I live so I've never been the one to get like all makeup makeup I can't even say I can't <laughs> the words wouldn't even come out of my mouth right but get all glammed up and yeah. do like a photo shoot and get my hair done in the sense of like nope if you see me looking raggedy on a Thursday night at 11 p.m painting live you know why I had a long day and I'm painting that's it um and I've never been one to put off that I'm like glamorous or anything like that like at the end of the day I'm a mom if I shower today it's a great day <laughs> <laughs> so it, I keep it simple I keep it straight to the point and I keep it honest above anything else that's really so at the end of the day we're all human like right. it's just about feeling trying to invoke those positive emotions and other people in like the tiniest way that I can and if it's through like a post then yay I'll go for that but um yeah there's all sorts of random stuff I feel like my I feel like my IG post can kind of be like a flea market you can find a little bit of everything like <laughs> something I ate something I somewhere I went something I did with my kid oh here's a couple time lapses <laughs> so yeah but but your feed is interesting, so yeah. I try I try to make it more organized now, to where three across are like somewhat related, because mm -hmm. um, it's it gets pretty wonky. Like I remember uh, there was a Gary V post um, that I saw. It was something like, oh, you know, post about everything. Like it doesn't matter, you know, get people engaged because you might be posting only about 
for example, I only post about art and then I don't post about, I finally once in a blue moon post about my daughter and people go nuts over like, oh my God, she's so big now. Like this and that they're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, We're multidimensional for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Well, yours are, are much more involved than mine because mine are usually because it's just it's just for the podcast. So I'll I'll post pictures of people who are on the podcast, um, but then sometimes I'll I'll post because I love photography. I've loved it since high school. So I, I'm a big person who takes pictures of sunsets and sunrises, and so you'll see some of those on my Instagram feed. And it's just for me. Um, I think that that that's kind of who I am in terms of, wow, I just, I want people to see that I love nature. So yeah, yeah. I do this podcast, but I like nature too. <laughs> and I had a chance, uh, at the beginning of the week to go to this local lake and fly my drone. So I have all these pictures that I took I bet they're of amazing. The lake, and I've got yeah. this one picture and to describe using my drone. I, I use an iPad to fly mm -hmm. the drone with, with their controller. So I'm not, there's a lot of glare. So you can't always see what it is that you're taking pictures of when it's really bright. So I saw this one shot that looked really neat. So I said, well, it looks nice, but I, I didn't get the gravity of the shot until after I got home. Mm. So, so I took this picture, but it's got the reflection of the clouds on the uh -oh. lake. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm just like, I, I did. <laughs> it turned out even better than I thought. And that's what I love about photography, especially drone photography, because you can get these amazing shots. I mean, that bird eye view, yeah. Yeah, it's just, you You couldn't get that on the ground. Oh, and no. <laughs> it, there's there's no way, or unless, you're, unless you were in a helicopter. So thank God for modern technology, mm -hmm. because you're able to get, get just the most amazing videos and pictures um with the drone and so for me it's just if i can share that part of me with the world too um then that that's pretty fun for me too so anyway enough of me um, <laughs> <laughs> um thank you mahogany wow you have so been welcome. such a wonderful guest and my first video guest yay so thank you i appreciate it you're you, I appreciate you so much taking the time out of your busy schedule because, like I said, you're an artist, you're a mom, you've got so many things on your plate. So thank you so much for taking the time to do the podcast today. I'm honored to have Keep you reaching on. out. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. It's it's been nice. It's like you, we had to discuss initially, like just having a one on one discussion sometimes and delving deep into the topics that we're most passionate about. It's just the best one of the best things about human connection Seriously. absolutely you know? i agree so thank you so much so today my guest has been mahogany noni so thank you mahogany again for being on the podcast today i really appreciate it thank you for having me you're welcome and that